from the BBC World Service in association with ABC and Akashvani. This is Stumped. Hello and welcome to Stumped, your intercontinental hit of news, features and debate from the quirky world of cricket. I'm Alison Mitchell in London, where a mural of the England and Surrey legend Graham Thorpe was unveiled at the Oval this week. Graham Thorpe took his own life last month and a private funeral was held this week, followed by a wake at the Oval, which is hosting the final test of the summer. And goodness, Joe Root was someone who was inspired by Thorpe and didn't he perform in the second test against Sri Lanka? Twin hundred, something he'd never done before. And he became England's record century maker as well. Clint, I can tell you, England are trying to climb up that test championship ladder. Ali, I'm Clint Wilden for the ABC in Perth, where we're still wondering what on earth happened between Scotland and Australia. Traditionally slow in the power play, the Australians, they blasted one for 113 in their most recent T20 international. And Travis Head, goodness me. <laughs> I did uh, watch that. <laughs> oh, it was incredible to watch, wasn't it? He's 73 unbeaten in the power play, uh, the highest ever. 16 boundaries, the most ever. He needed just 17 balls for his half century. He scored 80 off 25 deliveries. And all that after we had much excitement for the rooster. Jake Fraser McGurk, unfortunately, outs for a duck on debut, the rooster. We had all that action going on and the controversy about Mark Watt's long ball. Who would have thought a battle with Scotland outside of a T20 World Cup could be so interesting? <laughs> well, I'm Sunil Gupta for Akashwani New Delhi, where the festive season is coming up in India, but also there's the start of the formal cricket season. With the Dilip Trophy, it's the four-day red ball game. <clears throat> which is a precursor to the Ranji Trophy and, of course, is like a mini selection for the tests coming up against Bangladesh, New Zealand and, of course, Australia. And again, Clint, you'll be happy to hear that one of these games is being played in a small town called Anantapur in uh, the south of India called uh, Anan uh, Andhra Pradesh, where they have a green and bouncy wicket that is supposed to look like Australian wickets. So we're coming for Australia <laughs> in the winter. Good preparation. And um, you mentioned Bangladesh, Sunil, and we're going to be talking about that historic Test Series win that they had over Pakistan. And um, we'll be joined by Sharia Nafis, their former opener, who's now in charge of the international teams at the Bangladesh Cricket Board. But first, Baz Ball meets White Ball with the news that England Test coach Brendan McCullum will combine Test and White Ball coaching duties from January. McCullum's replacing Matthew Mott, who stepped down after England's dismal team. 20 World Cup campaign where they arrived as defending champions. The same story as at the 50 over World Cup in India last November. Well, the England Test team, meanwhile, have already wrapped up the series against Sri Lanka ahead of this week's third and final test. And that's part of an upward trend since uh, McCullum took charge of the side because before the New Zealander came on board with captain Ben Stokes, England had won just one of their previous 17 tests. Their record since is 19 wins from 28. So, so now and I just wonder what impact you believe this will have on the England team in all formats. Sonia, if I start with you. Really what he's brought to the test team is really what's happening in white ball cricket. I mean, the whole sense of fearlessness to go out there and express yourself. Um, and that's what he's actually converted into or what we have converted into this term called Baz ball. Now, uh, I think the one thing that he is going to bring is not just the fact of fearlessness and the way that he conducts that team. At the end of the day, what's a coach all about? It's about motivation. It's about saying, listen, I'm there behind you and I'm going to help you get along. So what he's been able to do, as you saw in that first test match against Sri Lanka, Ali, is that he's also got people not to just go out there and bash the ball around, but to also you know, put the anchor down like Joe Root did in that second innings to take in the, uh, bigger part of England to that win over Sri Lanka at Old Trafford. So now it's a question of modulating slightly what needs to be done. Of course, there'll be horses for courses. Everybody's not going to be in both teams. But I think really, and I know the jury's out on this in so many countries, one, to, one coach for everything or three different coaches. To my mind, if the nucleus of the team is the same, I think the coach should be the same. I think that's exactly what's happened with England. They've finally, as I said, seen the light. And I think he's going to actually transform the white ball team as well. Well, it does reduce the feeling of a two-tier makeup for the national cricket team, I think, the test players and then everyone else. And it's about 
to steal a line from somebody else. It's about the good vibes that he seems to be able to bring. And there's no doubt that that has an enormous impact. The the quality of the players there is is obvious. I think that he can, like he did for the, the test team, make them feel 10 feet tall. And I think that's a huge plus for England. The other advantage, I guess, with him coming in is having uh, the ability to oversee the entire nation uh, it means that if he wants to transition the white ball team, he'll be able to do that with a, a better uh, understanding of what's right across the country. And there's been a lot of calls for that, Ali, that there needs to be some change. So I think that that's going to be a plus for him too. Interestingly enough, just the news coming through today that Matthew Mott has just uh, signed up for three years uh, to join the Sydney Sixers in uh, in the BBL. So as he steps out and we see this decision with Brendan McCullum coming in, uh, Always there's coach changes right around the, the world. Question to you, though. Mm. Uh, what do you think will be first up in the, the in-tray for Brendan McCollum when he officially starts the, the new role in the new year? Yeah, I, I think really it's going to be raising the game of the white ball team without dampening what he's created in the, the red ball team, you know, just keeping the, the elevation and the energy high on both. I mean, the... The white ball team, yes. Does it need a shake-up? Certainly. Is McCullum the man to change the whole atmosphere around a side? Well, definitely, because he's he's shown that he does that, and that is what he does well. And I have to say that he he, he times his appointments well, doesn't he? Because he took over that Red Bull team when they were in the doldrums, that, that record of only one, one of 17 test matches. And now he takes on the white ball team when they're at this similarly low ebb as well. So, in a sense, he can't really go wrong. I mean, Matthew Mott had the hard task coming into that white ball team when they were at the top of of their game. And I think even at the time, Brendan McCullum, you know, would have looked at that and 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 said, well, you know, there's not much I can do with that white ball team. Give me the test team so I can really see where I can make a difference. Well, now the white ball team are in the same situation. So, yeah, it's going to be just elevating them, getting some results, but, but creating a, a fun atmosphere. And he wants cricket to be fun, doesn't he? Um, yeah, that, that's where I think his main focus will be. I can just hear him think when he you know, he was given this job of taking over. Though, well, all right, boys, the Marines are here, right? You can relax. I'm coming in. I'm, <laughs> McCallum is here. You know, like MacArthur would have said. Yeah, absolutely. So, picking up on, uh, on uh, what Clint said, what could this mean for uh, McCallum's current Test captain Ben Stokes and the current White Ball captain Joe, uh, Josh Butler, who oversaw that debacle in India? I mean, yeah. Stokes has been described as his appointment as an unbelievable move, but could he end up playing even more international cricket under McCullum, of course, if his knee holds? And then, of course, the final question, how will he and Butler get along? Yeah, I'll start with Butler. And maybe that was an answer to Clint's first question, what's top of his intray, is establish that rapport with Joss Butler, um, because that's going to be key to the success of, of the side. Um, for, for Ben Stokes, I mean, Interestingly, it might mean that, you know, possibly his career, his, his test career, you know, goes on even longer because I think there was a thought that perhaps McCullum would go until, you know, he, the end of the, the Ashes in Australia, almost as if this was a relatively short term appointment, you know, that he, he's done his work with the test team, he gets them to where you know, into a healthy place and then and then he can step away with them, you know, hopefully having won an away Ashes series. But now this Red Bull contract means that he goes through until, 20, sorry, the White Bull contract means he goes through until 2027. So maybe that means the McCullum and Stokes partnership in the test team, you know, will stretch on through that time as well. You know, injury permitting with Stokes and he's coming back from a hamstring injury at the moment. But yeah, he is contracted now through until the um, end of the World Cup in 2027. So what that does do is give it gives everybody stability, gives the test team stability through until that period as well. So maybe that will mean that, you know, we see Ben Stokes, you know, push through until not just the next dashes, but another one after that as well. Um yeah, I mean, we saw Ben Stokes come out of retirement to play in the uh, the World 50 over World Cup in India. I mean, that would probably be a surprising move that he comes back to white ball cricket under uh, under McCullum, and you get a unified captaincy and coach 
scenario, but never say never in this game. Well, further history made for Bangladesh's men this week with a first ever Test Series win over Pakistan. We talked on last week's show about their historic win in the first Test, but the Tigers followed up with a six-wicket win in the second, having been 26 for six in the first innings as well. It was a remarkable recovery with bat and then ball. Uh, Bangladesh's batters duly chased 185 in Ralph Hindi to seal what is only the third time that they've won a Test Series overseas. Former Bangladesh opener Shari Nafis joins us on Stumped. Shari, great to have you along. Um, just put into words the significance of this win for Bangladesh cricket. It's amazing. In my book, um, since Bangladesh has started playing Test cricket and international cricket, this has been the biggest achievement so far. Um, you want to be the best, one of the best team in Test cricket. Uh, personally, I believe if you play the Test cricket well, you will play the other formats well. Uh, since we have uh, uh, gained the Test status, yes, there has been a lot of questions. We, there has been a lot of uh, inconsistency in our performances. But for last few years, I think we have improved a lot and we have started winning Test matches home and away. But uh, nothing can be compared to this win. Going to Pakistan, one of the better sites in test cricket. You go there, you win a first test um, uh, when Pakistan has put up a big total mm -hmm. and then you bowl them out and you chase them down. That was fine. But what happened in the next test, uh, we cannot put into right words. Uh, mm -hmm. 26 for 6 and then such a brilliant partnership by Litton and Miraj and then bowling them uh, out. Uh, it's amazing. It's one of the biggest day of my life as a former cricketer and now working for Bangladesh Cricket Board. And I'm pretty sure it has been one of the greatest um, successes of a lot of players. How, just what has the re reaction been like at home? And, and given as well that this has come against the backdrop of, of the recent social unrest in the country. Yeah, people are very happy. Um, uh, if, you, if you know the history of Bangladesh cricket, you will definitely know. Cricket is one of the very rare things which can bring all the people from all the part of this country. Yes, we had been, we have been having some uh, trouble days in last uh, few months, and uh, the the whole country is uh, in a rebuilding process. Whatever the change has happened, it was done by the youth, the students, the protests, everything. And the youth of Bangladesh loves the game and they love Bangladesh cricket team and they love Bangladesh cricket. I'm pretty sure this win will, it has brought a lot of joy, a lot of courage, a lot of hope for everyone. And uh, as Bangladesh cricket did previously, it, will, um, it has brought the nation together and the whole nation is very happy. One of the great things to watch is fast bowling in cricket and Bangladesh hasn't been known for fast bowlers. Tell us a little bit more. You mentioned it then, but Nahid Rana, who's just been outstanding in the two test matches, the highlights we've seen, and not just because of the pace that he was generating, it's everything. He seems to have genuine cricket intellect as well. The way he got out Shan Masood was a, a beauty of a delivery. What's the mood about him at the moment and what he can go on to achieve? I'm a proud Bangladeshi now that I can tell um, one of our guys is clicking 148, 49, 150, 52 in, on a regular basis. We have to go back a little bit of um, in, into history. Uh, Mashrati Murtaza has been one of our biggest fast bowling superstars. And after watching them, a new bunch of fast bowlers came, with bowlers like Taskin, Mustafiz, Rubel Hossein, Shofiul. So we have been seeing a small progress in this era. Um, um, you need uh, uh, heroes, you need superstars, you need icon uh, to create new superstars. So um, th that has been the process. But if I can um, tell you exactly what happened, uh, Bangladesh Cricket Board, uh, we... In, Three to four, uh, two to three years back, uh, we changed some of our policies. Uh, Bangladesh has been a dominant spin bowling attack. Yes, our spinners have been doing really well, but uh, we knew that to win um, matches, test matches regularly, to win overseas, we need fast bowlers. So, uh, five to six years back, our selectors started giving fast bowlers an opportunity. 
um, when I was playing, even in five, seven years back, uh, we have seen like we have played two fast bowlers and three spinners. That was has been a regular uh, setup for Bangladesh team. But 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 if you go back from last four or five years, the selectors started picking up three fast bowlers. That was uh, that was the start of our fast bowling coming up. One small question, Sharia. Yes. Uh, what do you feel about that India tour? You think you have a chance? Uh, yes, uh, we, uh, we want to keep our feet on in, into the ground because in India is in India is the toughest side to beat. But I'm pretty sure that you know what happened was uh, in, after last two test uh, test match cycles, uh, we sat together and we wanted to make some changes in a in the mindset. So what we believe is, uh, if you look at the top teams in the world, like four top teams, if you say big four, that is India, Australia, England, and it, there's a competition between South Africa and uh, New Zealand. So these big four, if you look at, they are dominating the white ball cricket, uh, but they are dominating test match cricket. I personally believe that there is, they dominate test match cricket, that's why white ball becomes so uh, easy for them. So we started planning that we uh, must become top uh, big five because if you can dominate in test match cricket then your other formats will definitely come into play and we have performed poorly in last two cycles so uh, for this uh, significant um, test match cycle our target is to become one of the middle uh, middle side so that we can finish number five number six it gives us a very good platform to play much more uh, better in the next coming days so we are confident but it will be very difficult mm. I'm I'm interested briefly in uh, in your leg spinner uh, as well. Rishad, um, who, yeah. uh, Rishad Hossain really enjoyed watching him. I commentate on a number of his games at the T20 yeah. World Cup. Yeah. He's going to be going to the Big Bash as well yes. as only the second Bangladesh player there. But what what are his prospects? Can you see him moving into the Test team? Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, traditionally Bangladesh has been a, a country where we have produced a lot of left arm spinners. So we have a lot of heroes. We have Saki. We have Rofi. Bhai. We have Abdul Rajak. So left arm spin is our thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was very difficult because you never had those uh, road, road, role models. Richard hardly played domestic cricket. He was picked by the teams, but he never got match time. But the selectors always kept him in the camp so that he was confident. So he was, for last three years, he has been in every camp. He was practicing, practicing, and all of us getting some games. He was not getting regular games in domestic. But we make sure that when we are A-team is storing, when our HP is storing, we give him game time. And um, he is very confident, he's hardworking, and he also worked hard. So he got, when we wanted a leg spinner, he was one of our better leg spinners. So without playing a lot of domestic cricket, we just uh, kept blind faith on him and we gave him a go in the national team. And we gave a lot of mental support. I can tell you uh, right now, because he's one of our superstars. Rishad was one of the guys who knew seven, eight months back that he was playing, going to play the World Cup. So this is how we wanted to give him the confidence. It, I think in the month of October, we said to him, no matter what, we, we have eight games to go before the World Cup. No matter what, we are going to play the World Cup. So it's your time. You are going to get match time. So uh, be confident, work hard. So the national team management, the previous selection committee, they gave full support to him and he worked hard and he was confident and he started getting success and uh, one of the reason he got success in bowling because he worked on his batting as well so whenever he's not bowling he's contributing with the bat as well so he's a very good prospect and it shows like he hardly played domestic cricket now he's going to play big bash league and he's he's being um, picked in lot of franchise cricket so now we have to uh, we have to protect him from you know over bowling in a, a dom <laughs> uh, foreign domestic t20 tournament so we are very very happy we are very happy that we've got a leg spinner we've got a uh, we and uh, we are very happy that he is a very good package and you know uh, he works really hard on his game uh, he started uh, practicing on the googlies and the flippers, uh, on the technique. So he will be a very good prospect for Bangladesh in coming future. So that was Sharia Nafiz, former Bangladesh opener and in charge of cricket operations at the Bangladesh Cricket Board. Well, that's all we've got time for on this week's Stump. So I'll say thanks to Clint Wilden and Sunil Gupta and to all of you. And we'll talk to you again next week. Until then, bye for now.